Hi, I'm Ilva. And I'm Linda, and you're watching the interview for Destination Eurovision. Hello, my name is Camille, and I'm from Destination Eurovision. And today I have a great pleasure uh, to be joined by <clears throat> two great singers, songwriters, who are probably already very well known in the Eurovision world. Uh, Ilva and Linda Persson, it's so nice to be with you here tonight. Hi. Hi, thanks so much for inviting us. Great. Thank you. <laughs> uh, first of all, here. thank you. Uh, first of all, how are you doing in these difficult times? I we think are, we're doing we are... quite, quite good, actually. Uh, uh, we also have our regular jobs uh, besides the music. So it's, 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 we're doing okay, I would say. Yeah. But it's I, hard I... times for everyone right now. Mm. Yeah, but it's good that we can do this interview online. I mean, things are possible anyway, so that's great. And we know that music plays a very important part in your lives. Like, uh, can you tell me what's your earliest memory concerning music? Like, do you happen to remember the first song you've ever recorded or written? Yeah, I think that maybe our first memory is that we started singing when we were only one year old, actually. Wow. Yeah. And uh, our mother told us it was a Swedish folk song, traditional song. <laughs> uh, so we could sing, we started singing quite early, but then we also started writing songs. I think we were about seven years old, right, Linda? Yeah, that's, that's about it. And I think... We took part in a song contest also when in fourth grade at school. That's the first song contest we did with a Swedish song. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Thank, you. And, Thank you. And like, when did you figure it out that what you want to do is to uh, conquer the world of music uh, together? Like, this idea was kind of spontaneous or maybe you've been thinking about that for some time and one day you came to the conclusion like okay let's let's go into music i think that eurovision and melody festival and has always been a big inspiration for us so um we started watching it when we were uh, seven years old and uh, i don't think that we thought about writing music from the start or, or taking part in the music industry. It was more about the love of the music and uh, to compete and submit songs to uh, Melody Festivalen. That was the first thing we thought about. Yeah, and this contest, this contest has always been inspiring us to write our own music. And, and, and when we were younger, we used to record every contest on tape and uh, listen to all the songs and we, we tried to learn them, all the songs by heart too. So we were really big fans back then. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could use only three words like to describe your partnership, like three words to describe all the things connected with this twin flame project you're involved in, which three words would it be? Mm, I think the first word would be teamwork because it's so important to find good team members to work with and make this possible. That's the first one. And I think the second one, what do you say, Ulva? Energy. We talked about yeah. energy. Yeah. Because, Find, because we finding need the energy to, mm. to reach our goals. Yeah. For sure, yes, we need a lot. And, and we are energetic people, I think. We do a lot. And it's important to, to keep this energy. And also dedication and uh, taking responsibility and respecting each other is very important in, in this process, I think. Yeah. And before we get like very deep into your whole music journey, um, have you even ever thought that uh, you will do so much in this world of music in such a period of time because uh, your biography is that rich that it can like easily fill the dreams and goals of so many people. Like it's something truly remar remarkable. Like have you ever imagined that 
you can do something so amazing in such a short period of time. Well, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thanks a lot. So, mm, really appreciate that. Hearing that, having you saying that is means so much to us, actually. Yeah. And I think that our goal was just to get selected in Eurovision, actually. Uh, and it's still a big dream. And then we have scored better and we got more attention to our songs. So that gave us inspiration to continue. And we're, we're really not aiming for like a number of songs or a lot of money or anything, but we want to win, of course, and we want to reach success. That's why we keep going. Uh, because it, this can be quite a lot of work to, to write songs and do all the things. We, like you say, we do a lot of things in a short time and uh, it's fun, but it's also a lot of work. Yeah. Mm. And <clears throat> from the time perspective, like, uh, what's, the best, what's the best advice that you can give to young people who want to start composing songs, want to start produ producing music for someone else, like, and they don't know um, how it can, how it all can go, like, what would be the advice that you would give such people? I think, like we said before in the last question, be ready to work hard and promote what you're good at, your talents, find good corporations and people you trust, and also be passionate about what you do. And patience is something we have learned during the years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so hard work to hear that, but for us, it's a lot about work. Yeah, but also about the passion for it, about I think. About the passion, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Other, yeah. To keep going, you need to have the passion for the music. And as we all know, uh, life is never easy. And like all those moments of happiness, of joy, of successes are shared with, with these worst moments because that's how life actually works. And uh, sometimes when we're like going through these worst periods, we can lose uh, some faith uh, in ourselves, we can lose some energy in what we are doing. And you've already been working for like uh, so many years. So, uh, and you've probably uh, come through such situations not once. So uh, what is like your way to deal with such situations? Like not to let all these difficulties overcome you and simply deal with them. It's a good question because it's nice that you bring it up because I think failure is a part of everyone's lives. It's, it's part of growing as a person. And, and for us, it's been very important to, to have co-writers and co-producers and artists that we trust and who have the same goals that we have. It's very important to not lose faith and energy, to have teamwork. And, and another thing in more recent years, we have made more plans uh, because in the early years, we just worked and worked uh, for short deadlines. And now we try to plan ahead and we back up and look at, is this the right direction? Are we going in the right direction? Do we want to do this? Uh, that's very important. So you, um, you get more experience and you learn with yeah. the years. Hmm. And what's your earliest Eurovision memory like? And do you remember the first Eurovision song you've ever heard? Yes. Yeah. That must have been uh, Carola and Fremling in 1983. That's when we started watching Melody Festival Am and Eurovision. Amazing song. Amazing yeah. Song. So yeah, it was really amazing and you know, uh, the right timing for us probably <laughs> to start then. Uh, yeah, that's the first memory. And I think we also listened to I'm Bisschen Frieden. Yeah, uh, before, the year before. before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, on tape or something. Uh, uh, not like Carola. Then we watched TV. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and as, we, as it was already mentioned, like, you're trying very hard and working very hard with so much dedication to uh, get to Eurovision one day. So perhaps uh, could you tell me what does your vision mean to you? Yeah, 
of course, it means a lot to us. Uh, we've always been big fans. Uh, we still are, but I think we have been big, had bigger fans earlier. And uh, this music means a lot to us. Uh, it's a big inspiration. It has helped us during hard times in our lives also. Uh, and we still have our goal and we hope to, to win one day for a country and also to reach Melody Festival. So uh, it keeps us going, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it means a lot to us. It's a big passion. And we have already tried to uh, submit your songs in many different countries. You've worked with uh, many uh, talented artists from all around Europe. And out of all these songs, which one is your favorite? And is there any artist with whom you work that you particularly like? I think we have many good memories from this because we competed with uh, over 40, almost 50 songs now in 18 countries. So, but the first time we competed in 2013 in Moldova with I Need You Now, that was very special because we uh, traveled as composers and backing vocalists. So very, very special the first time. The first time yeah. is always special. Yeah. And yeah, despite uh, the outcome, it was really yeah. good. Mm. But we also love many of the other songs as well. I think that last year we competed in Norway uh, with We Are As One. It was, it was a great experience as well to go there. We love that song very much. And also Finland 2015, Hold Your Colors. And uh, we went to Iceland 2016 with Eye of the Storm and uh, we came third in the final. That was also amazing, amazing experiences. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to forget <laughs> all of those. So uh, yeah. And the artist uh, that we like most, I think it should be Duinita German in Moldova. <laughs> it's our favorite <laughs> because uh, we met her uh, in 2018 and uh, we went on stage with her, with her to sing the song and she helped us a lot. She treated us very well. She's a very warm person. So uh, we had a very good time with her and we came third in the final. So it was great. And so far in the Eurovision world, you're like known mostly of composing music and writing songs for different artists. And uh, would you like to represent Sweden at Eurovision one day, but not as composers or songwriters, but as artists? For sure, yes. If they want us, we would say yes, <laughs> by all <laughs> means, because we used to be show artists and we used to sing in cover bands and choirs, and we really enjoy it performing, but especially our own songs, of course. But uh, I mean, we wouldn't say no. We would say yes, for sure. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> And we've already mentioned like Melody Festival and we all probably know that in Sweden it is a very huge celebration and really a huge show. Uh, so my question is whether, have you ever tried to submit any of the songs to Melody Festival and or maybe would you like to take part in this show as singers one day? Yes, of course. We want to take part, of course, and uh, we have submitted songs. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have sent songs for probably 20 years. Mm. <laughs> so it's... Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, we have. We have. Uh, then you understand how difficult it is in Sweden. But uh, we keep going. We, we still have a goal to reach. Um, but we actually took part one time. There was a pre-selection for Melody in 2010 uh, called uh, the Melody Festivalen Web joker and we took part as both artists and songwriters with our swedish song varje steg and we came uh, 11th mm. yeah so uh, we actually took part and we hope maybe they will have some kind of pre-selection again really hope mm. for that uh, because now they have a swedish radio competition that is a way to reach melody festival as well uh, p4 nesta and we usually take part in that one too, every year. Every year, yeah. We hope for this year too. We are working yeah. for it. Yeah. And, and that's a way to get to the final and, and then on to Melody Festival. But it's a long way, of course. 
And what is your favorite uh, non-winning melody festival and song? Like, do you have uh, this song that uh, didn't won the melody festival, in, but you still think it is a great song and uh, this song means a lot to you? Yeah, I would say it's some of the songs from the 80s on Melody Festival and perhaps in the mid 80s when we started watching the show. Uh, we have many favorites. Um, which one should we say, Linda? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, like uh, Penilla Wahlgren and Piccadilly Circus is a great song. Uh, also, uh, Lena Philipsson, Dansa in, in Neon. So some sweet songs. Dancing. Maybe you know these songs. I don't know if you know them. But <laughs> <laughs> not a sin nor a saint with Alcazar. That's uh, not a very old song. Maybe. Well, it's a bit newer than the rest. Uh, det vackraste jag vet. Handen på hjärtat. Kall som is. Only a few. We have many favorites. It's hard to just say a few for us. Uh, we, we have favorites every year. Maybe, uh, uh, well, we, we used to have favorites, maybe not now. We don't listen in the same way now. Uh, we're not as enthusiastic, I think. We listen maybe once or twice on songs, but then we used to listen on and on and on to the songs. That's a few, um, anyway. <laughs> and what is your favorite Eurovision song like, both in general? and from the ones that represented Sweden in the contest. Mm -hmm. Waterloo. Yeah, for we sure. have to say Waterloo, of course, mm -hmm. and Euphoria. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's very special, of course. But then we have some other songs uh, from Eurovision. One from 1969, Un jour en fa, I can hardly pronounce it, but uh, it's a very good song, an old song. And, and then, uh, a song from Cyprus, I don't know if you remember, it's Steve Fotja from 95. I think it's good, it's the rhythm, it's not a very regular song and, and the songwriter and artist is great. Fuego from Cyprus. Yeah, that's a great song. That's a great song, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, then and then we, we like some Schlager songs from before earlier uh, that we like to sing, maybe that we like to sing now as well, like uh, Bed the Devil You Know, from the UK, and then also there's a song from the Netherlands in 1996, the Erste Care, the song we like very much, <laughs> and also from Iceland, the Sigga in 1990, uh, Eight Lag N. So th th those kinds of Schlager songs, very, very much Schlager. <laughs> yeah, ha happy songs, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah probably. And actually we, we can say that we worked with Sigga for Pride Iceland a few years back, so. Wow. Yeah? yeah, she's we such a great met artist. Her. We met her and we performed the song with her as well, live in front of many people in, in uh, Reykjavik. So mm. yeah, she's a great artist. And is there any Swedish artist with whom you would like to collaborate? For sure, yes. Many artists in Melody Festival and who used to compete, uh, we, would, we would be very interested to start new corporations actually, but uh, we can tell you that most artists are signed with labels and for us as independent songwriters, it can be hard to reach them because they are tied to mm. the labels. Uh, but, you know, if they would want to work with us, we'd say yes, you know, just we're, we're happy if, if people can recommend us or help us uh, get artists. Yeah, that would be wonderful. We can say a few names, the Mamas, Victoria, uh, Jon Henrik Fjellgren maybe, just to yeah. mention a few. Mm. Mm. And we also already submitted a few songs with Swedish artists from um, Sweden's Got Talent, Swedish Idol, for example, and, uh, and Melody Festival as well. So we have mm -hmm. actually submitted songs with artists. Uh, so it's just a question of time when we will mm. get selected. <laughs> Hopefully soon. <laughs> Yeah, we hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> um, Thank you. <laughs> and out of all the songs you've produced, like, um, is there any song that is of a particular significance for you? 
I think yeah. that m- many songs mean a lot to us, most of them actually. Um, but it was a very special uh, moment when we went to Belarus to meet Jeanette and sing uh, You Will Be Here with her uh, in the final. We actually came second by the jury there. And afterwards, the president himself produced the video for her. Wow. Of the song. Yeah. And we also won, won a prize for best uh, video, music video in Belarus. So I would say it's a, it's a special moment, this song, but also, like we said before, Norway last year, and We Are As One is, is a special song um, for us, and Hold Your Colors in Finland. And of course, Momentum in Poland, <laughs> when we came third with, with uh, Monica. Uh, so we, we have a lot of them, but maybe we have a few that are very popular as well, streamed a lot, like, uh, Overload in Ukraine with uh, Victoria Petrik, Stay Tonight with Laura in Austria, and uh, yeah. And then we have a few other singles as well that are outside of Eurovision that did very well. Uh, Survivors is a, a song with a uh, US Pride artist called Justin Utley. It's been very popular and also the song Unicorn with uh, which took first place in Eurokids contest, but it also competed in the pre-selection for Cyprus Eurovision. Maybe you know this, but they those songs have become very very popular, and we that that's amazing for us. Yeah, but it's hard yeah. to know which ones will get selected, and uh, what get gets popular. It's not easy to know, actually. Um, as a side note, like I can say that I actually voted for Monica during oh. <laughs> like, Fire Eliminacja 2018 and I, I really wanted her to win because yeah. it was a, mm-hmm. a, an amazing song and just her performance during the competition was simply flawless. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's you. a Eurovision artist, I think. She, she has got what it takes, Yeah, actually. And we also know that, like, apart from trying to take part in Eurovision, um, you have also taken part in such contests, like, for example, uh, Afri Music Song Contest. And uh, could you perhaps tell me um, how the cooperation with Linda Killian was born? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Afri Music has been really exciting too for us the last couple of years. and. We are working for this year too, to compete again. And I think that we got in touch with Linda through Mad Entertainment because they were interested in one of our previous Eurovision songs to release in Afrikaans. I think you pronounce it that way in their, in their language. And then this contest came up and we started a cooperation with the song, what's it called? I Will Never Fight. That's the song we competed with. So that's how it came about. And now we want to come, we really want to win this contest. I mean, it would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh, what's even more like, uh, from what we know right now, you're working on a song in Chinese, like to be, uh, to be released on this like music market. And how does it feel to work with artists from so many different backgrounds, different countries and cultures? like? Is it challenging in any way? I think we have always had this interest in different languages and cultures. So, and during the latest years, we have been having a lot of experience working with different artists and also with different languages and trying to understand each other. So we have, and and also a lot in writing actually, more than uh, talking with people. So maybe it's been a barrier, but I think we have got so much much experience that, uh, it's helped us succeed also. And, and in this case, we were working with Wu Ying. She's a friend of ours and she's a flutist. So uh, she translated for us because this Chinese artist, he didn't know, he didn't speak English. So she had to translate when we had a phone call with him. So it works out. I mean, it's, it's of course a challenge, it is, but it's very interesting. And I think we love this. The, the, that's what we love about Eurovision too. The different yeah. cultures and languages and, and styles and you know yeah and, and i think you need to be good at communicating and and open-minded and flexible uh because of course there are language barriers 
Mm. Uh, but you need to be interested in that to make it happen. And like Linda said, we, we have even competed with the artists and songs in some countries without even talk to them, only in writing. We haven't mm. met them or seen them, but just been writing and we took part anyway. So it's possible, <laughs> mm. uh, even though there can be difficulties and challenges. So it's possible. And we've already like touched upon it a little bit, a little bit but uh, we know that you've already worked like with a few Polish artists, like um, we've mentioned Monika Urlik, but also uh, Lydia Kopania. Um, could you perhaps tell me a little bit more about this collaboration and also whether, whether or not is there any Polish artist with whom you really would like to collaborate? Yeah, uh, it was really great to, to uh, cooperate with Monica and Lydia. They're both very professional. They have great voices. And uh, for Monica, we made it <laughs> to, and to the final and came third uh, with Momentum. So it was a great experience. Uh, and uh, Lydia, we released a few songs with her. We didn't make it yet to Eurovision, but hopefully we will one day with her as well. So uh, it's been really nice working with both of them. And um, maybe you can talk about- Yeah, yeah I think uh, we would love to represent Poland, you know, as songwriters in Eurovision, that would be mm -hmm. amazing. And, and we have been in touch, I think you pronounce her name, Alicia. Is that the right pronunciation? Uh, yeah, um, a little yeah, bit last. Very cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, last year we we had some. We were in touch and we sent some songs also now to her, but we're not sure if she will be representing Poland. Do you know? Uh, I can tell you that we know nothing. Um, <laughs> um, we, we don't even know whether we whether we will learn something in the upcoming days or maybe in the March, like just before the deadline. At this point, we know uh, basically nothing and have uh, no information who will represent Poland. All we know is that it will be just like an internal selection. Mm. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll see. see. If, if the chances come up for us, uh, we will take them, you know. And, and if you get any information, please tell us because we are very interested to know. Um, uh, we're just trying. We're trying, we're independent songwriters trying our ways here. And as we know, this year um, you've tried in Lithuania and with a song, The Way I Am, which was performed by Donata. Um, it was a great song, but unfortunately it didn't make it into the semi-final, but uh, for me personally, it was really sad to see, see it being eliminated because uh, for me, it was like definitely one of the best perform performances of the night. And uh, could you maybe um, tell me something more about uh, this collaboration and the meaning behind the song that, that you want to spread across? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. We appreciate that you like the song. And actually, we're very happy that we got selected at all this year because it's been quite hard even to send songs. Most countries have the same artists as last year. So uh, it was great to work with Renata and uh, we had a great cooperation. And uh, the song is about being who you are and true to yourself, actually. And I, we think that she did a great performance showing this, like you said, on stage. And she also did a, a special video for this in the background uh, with people taking part and, and we as us as well. So it was easy to work with her. She is, uh, we love her voice and her personality and she's very professional. So maybe another time as well, hopefully. We do not that. And now looking a little bit into the future, like um, we know that you're still trying like this Eurovision stuff, but uh, apart from Eurovision, what can we expect from you in 2022? Like, do you have any other projects prepared for the future? 
We're still hoping for more opportunities now with Eurovision in the coming years and new collabs with talented artists. And also we're working on finding good teams. We're looking for producers and other co-writers to work with us because this is needed for us to keep going and to get successful also. So we, we will keep going with what we're doing now. And also we aim actually for more TV performances in Sweden or abroad and online contests and releases. And we have some releases ongoing right now for this year. And uh, well, we, you know, we, we always submit songs every year and sometimes it takes a lot of lot time for, for a song to get selected and find the right match of artists and production and everything. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, but we still feel this is a passion for us and we want to keep going uh, in this direction because we want to win one day or uh, get in, in, internally selected. And now talking a little bit about this year's Eurovision, like the slogan for this year's contest is open up. And uh, how do you interpret the slogan? What does it mean to you? And maybe more in general, uh, what and why is your uh, favorite Eurovision slogan? Uh, I actually don't think that we have thought so much about the slogans uh, during the years, but this slogan must mean that you open up to each other, I guess. It's about opening up and that's a good slogan, but I think there are other slogans uh, we Googled a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Share the moment is a good slogan and celebrate diversity, I think, but most most of the slogans are good and they're like quite general, aren't they? And uh, I, I think if, if we're talking about this opening open up, I think the contest would really benefit from opening up a bit more to composers and artists. This year has been quite tough because they selected many of the same artists, a lot of internally and uh, our possibilities are less than previous years. So if they would take this opportunity with Corona and maybe do more online selections that would allow uh, new things to happen and more opportunities, I think, if, if they should follow their slogan. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And apart from Eurovision, uh, what is your biggest dream? <laughs> Our biggest dream is Eurovision, actually. <laughs> That's what it is. Yeah. Mm. And finally, um, what can you wish you for the future? You know what, uh, we really appreciate all the support we get. If you want to follow us at our channels on YouTube and subscribe and like and share, you know, and also, like we said previously, that if you can recommend us to artists or corporations, we're looking for producers right now who want yeah. to work with us for Eurovision. You know, have them write us, uh, recommend us, and uh, put in a good word for us. That would be very appreciated because uh, teamwork is so important for us. And you know, uh, it takes it takes time and effort to finalize a project for Eurovision. Perhaps people don't know this, but it, it it's a lot of efforts in in a song. Well, from from starting up and competing, quite a long way. And in this way, uh, we've come to an end. So to say a big thank you to you, you. For, for joining me today. It was really such a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, I wish you all the best for the future in whatever projects you're going you're going to do and whatever things you're going to work on. I wish you all the best and hopefully you will realize all of these things. And I really hope that one day we will, uh, you will finally make this biggest dream come true and go to your vision. Well, thank oh. you. Thank you very much. You're so kind. <laughs> yeah, we really need to hear this. It means yeah. a lot to us, you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for thank having you. us. We really you. enjoyed these questions. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>